One of the most shocking moments in English history saw the dead body and remains of the former Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell, being dug up and paraded throughout the streets of London. Cromwell was subjected to a posthumous execution, in which his remains were disinterred and then taken to Tyburn where they were hanged in chains and then beheaded. This was because he was considered a regicide, one of the men who were behind the execution of King Charles I, but Charles's son, the new King Charles II, then wanted to punish those who executed his father. With this, Cromwell's execution was carried out posthumously, in front of a huge crowd, but his head would go on a bizarre journey throughout the centuries. But the story regarding Cromwell's corpse is also rather strange, bizarre and mysterious. Join us today as we try to find out what happened with Cromwell's body. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. There were many rumours regarding Cromwell's remains and body, but when he died at Whitehall on the 3rd of September 1658, there was the instruction for his embalming. His corpse was disemboweled and then embalmed the next day, and the remains then disappeared from view following the lying in state that occurred at Somerset House. But then in November 1658, he had a grand funeral. It was a king's funeral at Westminster Abbey, and the coffin had one or more life-size models and effigies on top. But this may have been an empty coffin, as it's assumed that the corpse of Cromwell had been quietly interred before the funeral service inside of the Abbey. This was probably near to a spot in the east end of Henry VII's chapel, and the hearse was placed near here during the funeral. But in autumn 1660, the exhumation and posthumous executions of the regicides took place, and in January 1661, Westminster Abbey was searched for the remains of Cromwell. A corpse was produced and prized from near where this had been rumoured to have been buried, and then on the 12th anniversary of Charles I's execution, the corpse of Cromwell was dragged through the streets, and his head was hacked off and then displayed on a pole. But the headless corpse of Cromwell, it's believed, was then dumped in an unmarked pit beneath the Tyburn gallows. There had been many rumours regarding Cromwell's body, and what happened to this after his death. One was that he was thrown into the River Thames in the deepest part of the river, and was then left there. Another account was that he was buried in Holborn, and was then dug up near to the place where his remains rested before the execution. Another story was that his remains were carried to the place of his biggest victory, Naseby Battlefield, where he was then buried. Another one states that he was taken to Huntingdon, and that he was enclosed in a strong plain oak coffin, without any name or inscription, and buried 25 feet deep in a field on his paternal estate in Huntingdon, and in the field, he was then afterwards ploughed up. But there were doubts over the location of Cromwell's remains and where they actually were, but there were reports in the 1660s that he had at times moved around some of the medieval kings and queens, remains that were buried in Westminster Abbey. It was rumoured he did this to conceal his true burial site, so that his remains would not be messed around with after his death, and that he may have actually been buried inside of a royal medieval tomb. This emerged in print in 1664, and Samuel Pepys discussed this with Cromwell's former priest. But today these stories are considered misleading and vague, but at the time people believed that the corpse on show during the lying in state was a movable effigy, which had been crafted in wood with a wax face. The real body may have been stored elsewhere and not displayed, but whilst this was happening, Cromwell's remains would maybe have been buried elsewhere. It was said of his embalming process that, and his body filled with spices, wrapped in a fourfold searcloth, put first in a coffin of lead, yet it purged and rout throughout, so that there was all the necessity of interring it before the solemnity of his funeral. It was said in newspapers that on the 20th of September, weeks after Cromwell's death, that his body was taken in a private manor to Somerset House, attended on by his servants, and that the corpse had then been transferred to Westminster Abbey days before the state funeral took place. But there was speculation that continued regarding the corpse of Cromwell being the one at Tyburn. One version states that Cromwell stated his corpse should be exchanged with that of Charles I, and that when the posthumous execution of these remains took place, the executioner realised it was already the executed king's remains. This of course is a tale and is nonsense, but it shows you how the stories and questions regarding Cromwell's body remained, even centuries on. During the execution, it was noted that Cromwell was hanged in chains first, and that his remains were hanged in a green searcloth, and were very fresh because of the embalming. And one witness said, 
Cromwell is represented like a mummy swathed up, with no visible legs to feet. The strongest evidence points to the fact that the corpse taken to Tyburn was in fact Cromwell's. This has been generally accepted by historians, and that the tomb was found, and that he was quietly buried in Henry VII's chapel. This would lead to the belief that it was in fact Cromwell who was posthumously executed, and there was part of a register of burials at Westminster Abbey that described the east end of Henry VII's chapel as Oliver's vault, with the belief that the Lord Protector was buried there. But what then happened to Cromwell's body, and where is it today? There were three possible burial sites which have been considered, and these are St Nicholas's Church in Chiswick, St Andrew's Church in Northborough, and a stone vault in Newborough Priory. These ideas centre around Cromwell's connections. His daughter Mary, it's believed, gathered up his corpse from the pit in Tyburn following the posthumous execution, and that she then disposed of this in a place close to her heart. She and her sister are buried in St Nicholas Church, and another daughter owned Northborough Manor. But Newborough Prior is believed to have been a place where his daughter took his body, and then buried it inside of a vault in the church of her husband's ownership. These claims that Cromwell's body was taken from Tyburn to Newborough are interesting, and some historians believe them to be not a legend, but a genuine piece of family history. What is interesting is that there have been for decades requests to open up the vault inside of the Priory, and that each time these have been made, the family have denied access to the vault. It would have been conceivable that the daughter of Cromwell would have repatriated his remains elsewhere, but how would she have got her hands on them is rather debatable. Cromwell was seen at the time by many as a scourge of England, and he was a very hated figure by many, and by taking possession of his remains, it could have been very dangerous for his daughter to do this, and it's likely that Charles II would not have been happy with Cromwell's remains being buried elsewhere. The latter King Edward VII even tried to open the tomb of Cromwell's, allegedly inside of the Priory to uncover the truth, and to establish whether his remains are there, but it was not possible to do this, and the seal remains unbroken on this alleged tomb. The vault does contain the death mask of Cromwell's face, placed on top, and a notice that says, In this vault it is believed are Oliver Cromwell's bones, brought here by his daughter Mary, Countess of Falkenberg, at the Restoration, when his remains were disinterred from Westminster Abbey. But the story regarding Oliver Cromwell's body and his remains still are around today as a mystery has not been solved. His head would come to rest three centuries after the posthumous execution, but his body following the execution at Tyburn would have been lying in the pit, but to solve this story once and for all, the remains inside of Nuba Priory would need to be checked and tested. What they would find would be headless remains, and these could then be linked to Cromwell if there are any descendants today, but extracting DNA would be tricky, if not impossible, due to the lack of head. What do you think happened to Cromwell's body? Comment below your suggestions, as I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.